What's up, everybody? Good to have you in. Uh, like I said uh, yesterday, I know it was a kind of quick um, uh, uh, notice, but uh, I was going to have Tom in live. We was going to film it, which we are going to do a filmed episode with him after we do this, but I thought it was a good idea that we go live because uh, um, then you guys can talk to him and tell him what's up and that sort of thing. And um, you can ask questions, you could uh, share your love and that sort of thing. We have a lot to talk about. We have a tour coming up. Oh yeah. We have uh, we have an album that has dropped, and we have not really soaked the world in with our record yet. Really, we've kind of dabbled a little bit. It's gonna happen. But we're Very ready soon. to do that. And noticing that what we have, uh, as far as um, um, shows on the book, because we just announced one yesterday that I found out on the internet. Isn't that great? Is that how you found out? Uh, where is it? I don't even know. Oh, so you don't know. <laughs> uh, we are playing in... I heard about South American festivals somewhere. No, Syracuse, New York. Oh, yes. June I 18th. About, I knew about that. I didn't know about that. CCU. So you are at... What South American festival do you know about? See, I always kind of chill want you guys to know out there in the yeah. vault that I'm the last one to get anything. we got to get organized. I, no, it's nothing <laughs> about that. I read the internet. Everybody asks me, Zentro, what they want to know. Hey, what's going on? I go, I don't know what you guys know. I read the internet like you guys do. It's yeah, a lot of life. everything you hear on the internet. Yeah, so, so, but I know that there's um, a lot of people that are in there that um, wanted to wish you well. Like, we have really thank glad you, you, thank you, you are thank you, thank back. You, thank you. It has been a, a rough thank you. kind of a year. <laughs> Kind of it's thank you. I thank you for being back because you are such an anchor to the band that I play in. And uh, we've played, had a few guys that have done that job before and they did okay. They did good. They didn't do what Exodus is Tom Hunting and all of you guys know that. I mean, you know, it's, it's again, it, it, we, everybody knows thank that. You, thank you, thank you. It starts that with that. And so to have that element back behind and to be able to finally end uh, two years of us not being able to tour, uh, although we did get a record written and, and we did stuff. We did stuff. We did, we stuff. did do a couple of one-offs. We and did. That we sort did. Of thing. We did. It, it was a it was a large amount of time and uh, you know pr pretty eventful actually. <laughs> I'd say in the big picture for us, it, it gave us time to spend yeah. on it what we never did before. Yeah. Once it was in the can, it got oh, the recording process was amazing. So that was, and we're going to do that again. That has to be the These way guys to do immersed it. themselves into mountain life, and it was pretty awesome. Mountain um, life was fun. They, uh, they just got into it, and we were, we were a bunch of dudes quarantined in the mountains making metal, basically, and it was awesome. Yeah, the, the uh, actual. I think maybe next time we'll do it like that on purpose, not because circumstances drive us to doing that. But well, it had a good element about it. I think taking the time that we took was definitely. Uh, uh, beneficial for the way that this record sounds and the way that this record came out uh, when we we came into it. Normally, we would have been, and if it would have been normal, Tom, we would have been like, we would have had the tracking time, and then we would have been on the road, and then we would have thought three months later, oh shit, man, we could have done this, and Andy would have already had it and been Plus, doing it. But we, we, I, don't, I don't think we would have, uh, we wouldn't have had the ability because of COVID to operate the way, you know, we wouldn't even be able to go get lunch. You know what I mean? Well, at I, that I, time, because everything was no, it was, yeah. but that was, it didn't affect us because we were so far in the in the mountains. It didn't seem like it mattered up there. The little gro local grocery we store, bar barbecuing, barbecuing exactly, exactly. There was stuff eating to do. man food. Every yes, day. we were being men. But I think that I think that uh, attributed to the record being what it is is so because I mean mm -hmm. we didn't go in there as individuals. We went there as a unit completely. I mean. I, he was still doing drum tracks when I was up there. That's never usually the case. I usually come in when everybody's gone and done, and I'm singing to That's a mic in, in the window. And, and this, what was good about this is I got to hear it. I got to hear what Gary did. We spent all day going over it. Jack was do, We had a house right by. It's nice to take what you're, what you're recording and like go to another place, marinate on it, and then you can come back. Even three or four days later, and say, I want to do this over again because this fits better there. And yeah, we've never had that luxury. Just no. doing it that way. Not for me as a Because I was like, wow, I can enhance that riff with this drum roll and blah, blah, blah. I go work it out. And we had a B room and an A room and a C room and another house for you guys. Yeah. So. And I was, I just, I was at a table. I had my 
Zethro had to get used to my, the sound of a babbling brook next to I have my, uh, my, uh, <laughs> my, my normal units next to me, and, to, uh, and my, my phone, my, where my music was in, the lyric sheets, and I just went, sat there in this one chair the whole time, and just went, and it was basically teaching myself the songs, but I never approached it like that before. It was like, it was great. We were there for a purpose, yeah. and the purpose was to do this, so there was no other distraction, like, oh shit, got to take the dog to the vet. There was nothing. It was just straight like, you know, Exodus, we need to concentrate on this album and the writing and recording of this record. And I think that bands that do that, because, you know, we're not the only ones that have ever done that, those are the best records. Deep Purple, Machine Head, you know what I mean? B. Exactly, uh, Zeppelin did the same thing. Yeah. Do you think you're going to do it again, since it works so well? I think, I think we will. I think because we have already we, we, we've actually been doing it like that for a while because like we would always do drums in like a proper studio like shark bite over here by jack london um and we'd do drums but we would we would we would do drum tracks and i would get like six days say or seven days to do whatever tracks i want and including b sides and like this time you know if we wanted to do a B-side, we could literally listen to it the night before. I could go track it the next day. And, and there was a little jam area. Yeah. So him and Gary, there was a we whole... Had, we had an A room. There was a whole A room, room and the B room. There was a whole drum set and amps and everything. So if they wanted to go, let's go work this part out over here. But we had... We, go we, we prepared like a lot of the stuff in the B room, like just guitar, drums, no microphones or nothing. Just two guys, you know, rocking it out old style. Old, old school style and, um, you know... That's fun. I mean, I mean, the last time I think like I said, it's, it's like building the sandwich. The rib is the meat, you know. The I think the, the bread that holds everything together. Yeah, and that's how it started. And then, <laughs> I mean, to me, the last time we did this, really was uh, Tempo of the Damned was kind of done yeah. like this very much so. But I mean, really, before that started that, started because we we've, we've done vocal tracks up in Guerneville, California, where we would rent a house in the middle of the woods. And we would just set up like a, a vocal room, a guitar room. Those guys would work in shifts. I would be done with my tracks by then. So I'd be up there cooking them food or doing something. And at the end of the night, we'd go hang out in the hot tub and drink, you know, whatever. But that was good too, because see, we worked a schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, we started around 10 or 11, and by six, seven, it's done, and we started eating dinner. Nobody was there doing the marathon. Yeah. Prank sessions like from back in the days. Like, okay, so we're gonna track for twelve hours and then you're gonna come in and track for twelve hours and then we'll be back after that and track for twelve hours. Fabulous. And that was like, yes, that's how we did fabulous, that's how we did Pleasures of Fletch too. I, I believe the, the the next two were kind of done like well not necessarily force of habit, but impact. And that's where we started to do work away from being okay, we're not a band here anymore. Uh, the drums are going to be done, and then the bass is going to be done, and then the guitars are going to be done, and then you're going to come in, and when I come in, nobody's there. Yeah. You know, and it's like, so okay, here's my vocals, and I'll do this with no band vibe whatsoever, and I think that we created the Exodus It's good to have a cheer, cheering section. Plus, other ears Somebody going... Somebody tell you, don't fuck up! Other ears <laughs> going, you know... Don't fuck it up! You can do this better, or other ears saying, yeah. you know what I mean? They go and saying, Zach, because even on this record, as we finished it up in Lake Almanor, I was still doing stuff two months later. Yeah. Things that Gary and I were listening to, he called me and go, what do you think about this part? Think you can do it better? I'm like, yeah, why don't you try it like this? And then I was going in with Juan yeah. Urtiaga at trying it, and we were just doing the vocals there, and then he was sending them to Andy. And At one point, we had Andy on FaceTime. I'm like, okay, Andy, what do you want me to do? He's like, do it like this. And so then I did it. And he's literally on the screen from fucking England while I'm doing it, you know, and... and, and it's not a lot of that. And, 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 do it this way. And do it... Uh, that sounds good, <laughs> but got to give it more of that Zetro in there. And I'd be like, all right, okay, go. Cool. Yeah, 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 whatever, yeah. and then I would do that. And so that's kind of how we did it, but I never had the luxury of going back to an album and um, going, oh, fuck, man, what if I could do this on that song again? Because it was like, boom, six weeks... Records done yeah. in the can, producer, mix master out in the stores. Boom. There it is. This time it was like, well, 
There's something going on in the world today, so we have a little bit of time. Because I mean, honestly, we get to forcibly marinate on this shit for a while. And we did because the record was not re even released. I'd say a year after it was done. I, I yeah, about yeah. It was a year. It was a year. Yeah, because we started in August of 2020. And finished, in, and finished in October. We started writing it like late May, right? June, and then it was a year. Because it was going to come out in the spring. But it was awesome. Yeah, I love it. But it was. But great it, great uh, group of songs. Yes. So, yeah, what do you guys think? Obviously, leave me comments. You've heard Persona Non Grata. What do you think of Tom's drum playing on the record? I think you 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 were like a man possessed on this album. Thanks. I really do. I think that you uh, knew what was at stake. And if anybody... It was easy to be focused. Because, well, because I, I was... I, I mean... That's apparent. For, for, for somebody to, like, roll out of their own bed, have a cup of coffee, and, like... You know, you went to bed thinking about how you're gonna crush a song, and like, I mean, it couldn't have worked out better for me because I was comfortable, I was in my own space, and I had all the time in the world to do something I love. So, fuck it. Yeah, well, it came out absolutely. And, and I, I think, and I think the vibe we had going, like everybody knew it was gonna be special, it was gonna be different, and now that we get to go and can't wait to play that shit live. No. So no, we're um, not gonna tell you what we're gonna, playing live, but it starts in. Eight days, Walter. Eight days, I believe. Oh, right. Ninth is the first show. Ninth, uh, April 9th, uh, San, San Luis Obispo. Obispo. So um, we're coming. It starts. It's real and it's going on. And then just follow from there. I noticed yesterday there's uh, seven or eight shows sold out uh, right oh, now. Which Ace is, of Spades is shit sold uh, yeah, out. We knew that was going to happen because the, we there wasn't a really a Bay Area show other because you guys got it. You were the first ones to get it. You got it in uh, in. Um, uh, November, so we can't. Uh, it, it was just. Don't worry, it's probably gonna come back again. They're don't not worry stupid. Don't we'll worry, back. we'll be don't back. back. We'll be back. We'll be back. But uh, but um, we are. We, if you haven't gotten it, because you can VIP meet and greet us now too at a sound check thing. So if you haven't done that, I haven't seen any you guys in a long time. Come say hello. I miss you. Please come to our super spreader event. Exactly. There's no <laughs> more super spreader. You ain't got to worry about it. I watched Academy Awards the other night. Nobody had a mask on there. I didn't hear about anybody getting sick. Saw a guy somebody, get punched, got slapped. somebody got punched <laughs> in the face. But that's, uh, gee, only at the Oscars, huh? That would never happen at a metal awards show. Never. Never like that. Um, Tom, talk about, um, you want, you want to talk about the last year. And the last year. Because I know a lot of the uh, viewers that are tuned in or wanted to know. They, they got, I'm sure they have a lot of questions about it. I'm sure Walter's looking at that right now. Um, because this... <laughs> And this kind of leads out of us talking about the record is because you noticed it during yeah. the the the. Uh, yeah, I knew something was going on like during the writing process even. Cause, even in May, yeah. so back that early, you knew something. A little bit of something, because like you know, and I've I've always had like kind of gut gut problems where <clears throat> where you know I would take a lot of Pepsis and Pyrosets, you know, and after a while, they'll prescribe you that stuff for years. Uh -huh. You know. Um, even like a doctor will prescribe you like, uh, you know, hospital grade sure. stuff. But um, in reality, you shouldn't have to take those drugs for a year, year right. and a half. And anyway, time went by, and like, you know, I, I guess I started losing my appetite, and I started losing a little bit of weight, and I noticed the appetite loss, and I was like, food don't taste that good to me right now. And um, my father-in-law was like. You look skinny, man. You okay? I'm like, I think I'm all right. Anyway, so was this in December or January? Because they, I, I know this was uh, this was the summer. This was like July. Of this was before we before we played because I felt before we recorded. Yeah. I felt that you were like I said we were talking earlier before we went on camera that I felt that um, man those promo shots that we did where you're in the the um, the overalls and the and the warriors <laughs> you looked like fucking. Man, fucking Paul Bunyan, man, Man Mountain Bike. When you own the pistols, and well, I was, I was still doing, you know, working out and like, you know, getting my my work in on the drums and hiking a lot and chopping like shit tons of firewood and stuff like that. That was right before I got sick, sick, and like, and then I got diagnosed uh, February of 2020, 20, 2021. They finally gave me a scope where they like go in with a camera and they look in there. And they were like, oh yeah, you got a golf ball sized tumor in, in there. Um, and I know that because they said, 
the readout said so many centimeters, and I was like, what's the size of a golf ball? It was almost exactly the same. But anyway, at, at the end of the day, um, <clears throat> that's what they told me, and I, um, I like took pause about it, and I'm like, well, here comes the fight, because that's what you have to do, right? Um, Chuck was a huge, Chuck, Chuck Billy, Billy Chuck was Billy. a huge um, uh, friend, and you know, he was supporter. Somebody to lean on totally. he's been through it. I know because I again, like we had spoke he, about he this. Told, a lot of people reached out and like told me what to expect, like going forward with it, and like, you know, they put this chemo point thing in me, which I'm getting out on Friday. Fuck yeah, um, that's good news. Because they can't give me any chemo anymore. Chemo didn't work that well for me, actually. Uh -huh. It shrunk, shrunk the growth inside me, but anyway, they ended up taking my stomach in July. So, uh, so talk about that. Talk about like you know they. That was a trip through. because. So you have your plumbing is completely reworked right now. It is, and as I was like laying there, in a fentanyl with a fentanyl uh, epidural for five five and a half six days. Um, the, when I woke up in, in post-op, the surgeon was there and he says, we got it all. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> I was just out of my mind. Uh, I, was like, I was like, what exactly did you guys do in there again? And, um, cause I had been pressing the button cause it hurt, the fentanyl. I can just press the button with your thumb, drugs, they work. Lovely. <laughs> Anyways, so he drew me a picture, a cartoon drawing of, of like a normal digestive system and what I have now. And man, I stared at that fucking thing for like five days going, how they do that? How am I out walking around, you know? So and, basically then, and, and, then you get, and then you get out of the hospital and then you're like on your own and then you think about, um, you know, survivability because you're walking around with this huge scar and like, you know, you can't eat normal amounts. It's, it's an adjustment phase where you're kind of like freaking out, but you have to like, you gotta just lean into it and like let your body like adjust to having not having that organ anymore. Now, so just so everybody knows, you had your stomach absolutely total gastrectomy yeah. completely removed. Yeah. You no longer have a stomach. No. And so if you can't explain, I beg for them to like, can I just keep like 20, 25 percent? Uh, I really like burritos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like the belly laugh, you know, all that shit. And they're like, you're gonna be fine. But at the time, like after the surgery. You know, I mean, they gotta cut cut your skin, and then they gotta cut your muscle, tear that up. They gotta get into your basically your very core, and pull out this huge organ, right? Which had like you know a, a tumor inside it, and um, they so was it, it an option to just take the tumor and, out? And, and also as a curveball, like they do an exploratory surgery ahead of time called laparoscopic, where they basically they cut a little slit. They go in with a camera and with another device that kind of moves organs out of the way so the camera can proceed and keep going and like look at stuff. Really? And they found what they thought was the same kind of cancer in my stomach on my on, on my abdomen wall. And it was a form of mesothelioma. And I was like, what? <laughs> but at first they thought they were looking at the same cancer I had in my stomach, in which case I would have been stage four plus, forget about it. But this guy gets chemo, keep him comfortable. Um, until you know, ultimately it takes you out. But right. anyways, the fact that I had a second type of cancer, meso, um, it's called peritoneal mesothelioma. <clears throat> they did a surgery within a surgery. So like, I met, <laughs> I met the second surgeon on my way to see the other surgeon. I was out of my mind. Like, like hey, he's like, I'm Dr. Adam. I'll be working on your mesothelioma. I'm like. Cool, thanks, man. Right on. Oh, I was just, <laughs> wow. The whole thing, like looking back on it, it's, it's pretty mind blowing. So anyway, um, when you get out, you start thinking about survivability, and you just you learn to eat again. Like I eat smaller portions, but more often, I always carry snacks. You uh -huh. know, um, I'm trying to gain weight again and gain muscle mass. I'm, I'm lifting. I'm doing push-ups. I'm hiking a lot, playing a shit ton of drums, but. I thought that like uh, the surgery and everything would leave me, I definitely mourn for the beast that I used to be, I guess is the only way I could put it. Like, cause I was a big guy and you know, always like 190, 195. And, but 
after all of this, I feel completely different. Is that is that achievable to be that way again? Is it possible? They tell me it is, but I'm not going to push it right now. I'm like, I'm about 165, 167, my normal weight. Um, I was a little bit heavy before, um, before all this happened. They tell me that the weight's kind of cool and that the weight's cool right now and I can gain weight a little bit. You know, more protein stuff, more push-ups, more lifting or whatever. And I'll do all that. But from a drumming standpoint, I was surprised by um, just how... Like, I was like, man, I'm not gonna have no power. And, you know, that's when I'm starting to get back now. And I'm like, wow, there's something to this, like being a little bit smaller framed and more limber. Kind of like Donald Tardy from well, Obituary. Because so. Donald hits about, does thousands of shit out of his kit. Yeah. You know, he's a pounder. And I think that's, and that's, he's, that's he weighs about 98 <laughs> pounds wet. <laughs> that's kind Love of. Love you, Donald Tardy, by the way. <laughs> totally. Love that, that guy. It's nothing Love but a compliment, believe me. Love your brother yes, too. Exactly. Yeah. The whole fucking anyway. Man. But um so yeah, so like that's that's how I'm approaching um, the drums now is maybe less from like a brute power uh, position and just like I'm pretty flexible now uh -huh. without all this extra stuff and like I can move. Maybe so. it works in like a funny, weird way to your advantage. I'm just I'm grateful for um, you know, being on this side of it and being, I guess, through the treatment, all the amazing vibes from everybody and um, medical science, like, I'm able to live my life like normally now. And it culminated into a positive outcome right now. It sure did. All of it. I I'm sure of it. Um, well, I mean, look at the love that you get from all the people, I mean, that you've gotten. I mean, from um, everybody, and I, again, we had this conversation about this yesterday. You have no negatives in your corner. I got a few in mine. I'm sure you can find a page, too. So a couple of things that found Zetro. Sure you can. Sure you can. Tom Hunting, zero. Zet, probably a couple 25 pages of shit on the internet about. Nah, that's all right. It just it goes with the territory, guys. We've but all I had think, our, we've all I had think our that that, I think that that's... Uh, Mine's been 38 years. Uh, that, I think that um, that in itself is was, I mean, to me, the, the outcry and the outpouring of everybody. In fact, Walter, you have something here for Tom that you did, you did together, right? Well, yes, and uh, I'd like to present that to him. There's a couple of different things. And one wanted is, we love you, Tom, and you look great, love you too. and we're so, so yeah. happy. All right? And, but uh, Nurgle from Behemoth, along with... Tommy Werder Chick, who's we know as Polish yeah, Tommy, Polish Tommy. Always Sue Tommy. Tommy. Stuff. Yep. Anyway, he, uh, with the band's permission, he had a jacket. And it's a dual thing, the Polish Legions, who we all love. Everybody know if you're a touring band that totally. plays thrash, you know the Polish Legions. And totally. there's a behemoth jacket special. Rad. A gold Thanks, embroidery. Man. From Nurgle. Thanks, dude. Yes. And that was one of the things that we did. Yeah. And, nice. and I thought also I'd like to read some, because I, I do read the official Exodus Facebook page, and I thought an interesting yeah, thing, Tom is the only original member of Exodus. <laughs> I thought that was, that was, when I read that, you yeah. know, he, I know, so I thought that was interesting. I, I'm, a, I'm a three time loser in this band, baby. <laughs> Me too. I, I, got, I got three stints both under my belt, baby. We both do. Here we go. This one's been the longest one. <laughs> All right. And during this time, I love it. Tom, uh, I, I got together with Steve and I thought, wow, uh, we're going to put up a couple things like a Thrasher Titans hoodie that Steve actually wore and loved and was so beat up, but this girl back east bought it. And Do you we put a name? Um, I, I forget. Sure we got that information. We can oh, we have it, it and I have it. But uh, there's things like that out of his personal clothes that he had worn and beaten down, and fans wanted it. And uh, okay. and also, uh, again, Tommy uh, donated the Machine Head signed poster. It was yeah. a, a, a few things, but we raised a nominal amount of money for you. Yeah. That's uh, short Thanks, of five hundred dollars, and we thought we'd give it to you right here on the yeah, show instead of, in, instead ca of, in, in cash. cash. So you know, at least. There, 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 there it is. is. So we, we saw that stuff. So we, I know that everybody Shit. that has given him his PayPal and, and given him to, to, to the GoFundMe, we want to thank you guys so much because it really so much. helped out. And, and, and everybody, I mean, really came to the party on this. 
And I, I seen so many celebrities like uh, uh, Kirk Hammett, ex Exodus member, Metallica member, Chris Jericho. Uh, the GoFundMe so raised many like raised, so many an people. unbelievable yes. amount of money, and and it really helps in every bit. And I know, I know it still helps, and I'm glad that uh, every a, little bit can can can. It's can impossible. Come. It's impossible for me to to uh, even begin to brush the surface of the level of thanks that I feel for all about all about that. Um, it's uh, it makes me emotional, so I'm gonna try not to get emotional about That's it. Fine, man. But uh, you know, like I said in Oakland, like I never felt alone. I never felt like, you know, of course, ultimately you have to do some things on your own. But I just felt like there was always something there. Yeah. So That's nice. We were there for you, brother. We were there for you. Everybody was the whole. Fucking world was there for him, yeah. and I mean, if um, you guys were at the Oakland show. The good news is I get to stick around for a while, so I'll yeah. and play. Thank everybody. The play and it starts in eight days, so if you haven't gotten your tickets, you better get your ass out there because returning finally to the states on the same stage will be me, Gary, and Tom. So um, we haven't played and together. And Jack. <laughs> well, I mean, just you, and us. Well, I'm obviously Lee and Jack, but us three have. I mean, Gary has never really. We haven't. When I got back in the band, he only did like one tour, and it's always been Craigan. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's so it's like be back, I, be back. Been, you know, he calls it the mothership. So it's good to have. Her. It's sure. good to be back. It's good to be out there for all you. What do you got for me, Wallace? Take well, some stuff. I got one thing I want to say too. It's uh, you go through your dark time. You said, and uh, but back when Blood In and Blood Out was in its beginning, I I have heard. That uh, actually, you didn't want you, you didn't want Zetsu's vocals to be that good, and when you heard it, you kind of said that it's like you didn't want it to be, but you realized it was. And I thought that was a funny twist on it, from the time and how everything is healed. Of course, it's come, it's gone three sixty. I, I, I think but we, is well, we never worked we never worked worked on the um, the other stuff that led to like whatever happened when it happened. Um, you know. At the end of the day, like this band has been a mess at times, and like, and and I don't just mean like with drug use, I mean like with communication and like the way we talk to each other. We're fucking old men now, so like we should be able to say. But I think everybody's that way. I think we're yeah, all that way now. and you know like respect when, when, each other's. Community. When you're a kid, you don't know how to communicate, even to people, because like a band is like a five-way marriage, like kind of, because you live together on on the daily, but um. Yeah, I mean, back in the day when when, we when were, I came in and heard his vo voice on the Blood In Blood Out tracks, I was like, that sounds like Exodus. Yeah. So, you know, no no offense to Dukes, and and we love the work that we did with Dukes. Like I talked, I love the work you do with Dukes. And you guys sing each other's that's shit great. like amazingly, and that's like a sign of like, you know, putting in the work like, like dude, when I got to play Death Amphetamine, I'm like. I want to try to nail nail this this hyperspeed double bass part. That's Jen, feel the same thing at. about Death and Fenby for some reason. Why is that the one that I just stare at on the set? Let's go. Well, here it comes. Here it comes. It's just the cadence, the vocal cadence. Yeah. Uh, those of you that are coming to Tucson, <laughs> you, you might be seeing a Rob Dukes uh, um, on stage uh, in the Tucson show. Quite possibly. Okay. So. Anyway, there are so many comments that are coming in, and I okay. can't read all of them. You got any questions? I, well, yeah, I do have a question. What question. school did you go to, man? <laughs> what school? <laughs> <laughs> did you I got him. Owen, Mike, Graveyard, uh, Iron Duke, Thrash Machine wants to know if you guys are going to play the title track for Persona and Gata. Um, you know, see you at the first show and last. See you at Bloodstock. I could go on and on. Crystal, of course, Renee Hi, Cruz. We have so many of the regulars in here, and there's... So many, so much love for Tom. I can't read it all. So somebody from Ukraine is even piping in. I don't know how they're connecting, but so sorry. somebody well, the from band, Ukraine. The band's actually played played with Ukraine. Oh yeah, I wasn't with them. Neither was Zet Band. That was a, that was a shovelhead tour. They played Kiev, and I mean, I hope to get to Kiev. Yeah, yeah, Tatiana from uh, so Ukraine too. is, and she says, "See you soon. I hope that you guys do." And we all wish the best for that. We wish the best for you guys, man. Yeah. If our music's helping you get. Through this, please take advantage of it. I hope this thing ends soon. I, nobody wants this. Nobody does. 
Only one person. We want to come and rock this. out there. And, and I want to go to Russia, too. I, I'm sorry. I want to play there as well. That's nothing against the people there. And we know it's not the Russian people. We know. We know what's going on. Just, can't we all just get along? How long we've been saying that, damn it? <laughs> anyway, there's all sorts of others. Will you guys be hanging out after the shows on the U.S. Always, tour? Always. Be always. Looking. You guys know that. You know if you want to take a picture with me or get whatever. I got a hint for you guys. Out. Head to we're the pretty, tour bus pretty, and find pretty, out where that is. We're pretty I'm accessible. I'm not <laughs> a, one of those that hides. I never have been. Cool. You know who can't hide on tour is Chuck Billy. Because no, he's, he's so fucking big. So big. Also, uh, hello, can't, Tom. You can't hide, hide a body like that under the one guy. Here. Mark uh, Jamillo from uh, New Mexico is saying much love and hello, Tom, honey. And I just wanted to throw in there Albuquerque is one of the shows that sold out. I know. Well, Chuck Billy should be the uh, mayor of Albuquerque. He could the be. The last time we played there, Chuck goes, Zet, let's go uh, do like a, like a jog. We're going to walk down the street. So I'm like, cool. We didn't get to uh, every corner. Old women in old cars, Chuck Billy! <laughs> I look over at Chuck about, you know, Charlie, when you're done with this shit, you should come down here and run for mayor and governor. You get fucking voted in. And I swear to God, we were going down the street, and it was like old ladies, Chuck Billy! I mean, that Oh my God! <laughs> Show was sold out. I mean, he had his own, he had his own tribe there. So yeah. And Nicholas chimes in from Vegas, and I wanted to say that you're going to be playing there because I talked to Tiffany on the phone recently. You're playing there and have a day off where the Scorpions have a, re a, a residency. It's a, it's a residency. I don't so know. you might be. I know, but what they like, normally what they like to do is get to the next venue and then have the day off so that the driver can. Sleep and everybody, and oh. it's always better to get to the next. I That's am funny. Going to, I'm staying in Vegas hey. and, and going see to see the Go see Mickey, you really? what I tell Mickey, you? Mickey D. And it's my fifth wedding anniversary. Uh, oh, you nice. are? Nice. Okay, well, then maybe we will. It's funny because I remember I you guys are all about in. the bus drivers now, but back on the pleasures of the flesh. That's <laughs> do you remember that bus driver? Yeah. <laughs> and I like uh, Bernie. Yeah, and Bernie was, was a great was a guy. guy. We abused Bernie. We abused the fuck out of Bernie. We, we've, we've had some doozies. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we got Chris, Tone, Renee, whole, Will Davis. That's a whole chapter on the drivers. The drivers and and I could go on and on. And uh, who was it? Uh, uh, how about, okay, this is a good one. Um, Oakland Dish Metal Boy says, hey, did you hear about the mummified body found at the Henry J. Kaiser? Did you oh, guys yeah. hear about that? No. Yes. It was found yep. in the walls at the Henry J. Kaiser. Yes. They found a mummified body and they're doing, you know, Forensic thing are on that. Gonna, are, like they are they reopening? Are they trying to reopen? Or? Anybody yeah. has a missing? There's lots of They're famous concerts. It was just found recently. This is we're we talking. played there. Well, and a lot of bands have. We're not saying it was a That's concert. Easy, though. easy. Back in black tour. Yeah, I did so too. Easy, I was there. I went to hell there. Oh yes. And we seen I with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Travers, we Motorhead. Remember you saw Motorhead. Motorhead there with them, with Exodus and, and Wendy O. I, I played there with Urban Dance Everyone Squad, Wendy Exodus, and chasing Rick around. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. She wanted some. Rick she wanted Rick. Rick. Yes, that's Wendy O. Was chasing that's Rick around. That's great. <laughs> yep. I've seen a dude so afraid of. Yep. Yep. And yep. we got Will Carroll. Hey, Tom and Zet. We got Beth Reisner. Hello, fellas. Hi, guys. We Don't got see you, Will. Tom. I'm we I'm have. Just, just so many people. Let me see if I can pull out another one. Uh, Which gets us back to Bass Strikes Back Tour. Um, again, this is our first tour since it's been over two years, Tom. We came back I know. March like 10th or 12th of 2020. Yeah, We've I'm done a few one-off shows. We played Psycho Vegas, which you weren't a part of, and we played Full Terror Assault, which you were also weren't a part of. And then we did... Uh, Bay Strikes Back tour the de uh, two days after um, um, Thanksgiving in November, which you were a part of. But other than that, we've been pretty just dormant with it. So now, and then we did the open thing a couple of weeks ago. With, so now if you've noticed on our website, we're going back to work. There's Europe dates. There's a date that was just added uh, tomorrow <laughs> or yesterday in Syracuse with Municipal Waste and Voivod and a bunch of other cool bands. So... Uh, I hear that they're working on Bass Strikes Back Tour quite possibly for September, October, but you know nothing's in stamp yet, and uh, quite possibly for all the people in South America, I heard quite possibly, don't take this as a thing as I don't know, shit changes, quite possibly South America at the end of the year. So we want to stay busy, just to let you know, we want to stay busy, we want to come out and play this new record for all of you guys, and obviously play all the old... Uh, 
classic favorites for you as well. So, so uh, we had uh, two songs played back at the bass rights back in at the Fox. Three. We had two. Then the oh, oh, two, yeah, right. two, and two. then you added two more, wasn't it? One more. One, one more. more. Uh -huh. So now you have three, and we'll just speculate on and on. But I have a good question. I believe there's going to be another one as well. From what Let's I was see. told, there's going to be another one. It's a Great. surprise. All right, guys, beautiful. Okay. <laughs> also, I wanted to put in a good question because I wanted it's to beautiful. see, you know, with yeah. this conflict with Ukraine and Russia going on in this, Lee Haltus is from Russia and came here. He's what from eight? Ukraine, actually. Is he from Ukraine? Ukraine? See, that's what I wanted to touch on. And I didn't know exactly. I don't know his so, take on this whole thing. So right. I mean, you'd have to ask Lee. And but I, I didn't know that. And, see, and I was that, thinking that he was this, from Russia. But as no. we were kids growing up, you, you thought of Ukraine as Russia back well, then. We didn't know. It was all USSR. Yeah, and I didn't even was. know it was so individual until later yes, as you learn about sure the worlds and everything, right? It start that way. It ended up that way. So, yeah. So, so we wish the best there. That's good to know. So, and uh it seems like Russia's this like boyfriend that just won't go away and the chick's like Dude, we've had our time right. you know what i mean yeah it's over okay and Tom, won't uh, go away won't go away have you <laughs> have you heard uh rick canult's new pres uh yes. Yes. yes yeah and well, yes. i just like your take because we got steve's take on it before i think it's incredible and, and i think rick's so happy with it and he's so excited about it and um i think uh there's a lot of parts like in that music that they're going to try to recreate live, but, but Rick's super excited, and the music sounds awesome. The singer's killer. Um, there's a lot of musicianship going on. There's yeah. a lot of different there's like elements. There's and, stuff and there's violins. And violins and stuff piano going on there. And piano. And then it's heavy. All, all those parts could, could so be reproduced. So, I mean, so. there's so much space in the music that, you know, Rick, Rick you know can play piano, so maybe yeah. maybe people are going to be presently surprised. Mm -hmm. Give me yeah. a couple more, Walter, and then we're going to get out. All right, people are talking about the Kabuki. Just wanted to just. Oh, get... I bet they are. <laughs> the Kabuki nightclub. You remember that? Oh, that I, was, that was a great Blood, place. Bought it by Blood Record release party. Okay. Yeah, right. I know that was with uh, Megadeth and Control. Except Balls to the Wall tour was there. Okay. Yeah. So what else? Medicines, the Omni, the Farm. We can go on with these. That was Farm. Was my first shows with Exodus in '86. The Farm, two nights. Maritime. I drive by it quite often. Actually, it's it's blue. Right. What Maritime we have we're because uh, Rasta Titan. Amazing. That's where I there. saw the plasmatics. Saw Dio there. Yeah. Okay. Really? And uh, what Mr. 30 he Scratch, he does conquer either. that. Is the word for Exodus and metal. Tom conquers all. Um, <laughs> you know, Spooky Boo saying, hey, guys. Hey, Spooky Boo. We love Metal her. Storm. I could name a, a ton of other. Everyone's going to see you at the Bloodstock. Yep. This and that. Uh, wherever they are. We, we got Brazil in here. Mike, Mike Crisp wanted me to give you shit about something. I don't know what that means. But you can give me shit thing. about anything, Mike Crisp. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'll see you in Detroit. How about but, France? You guys, that's another one. Well, we'll see them in... Uh, Eric. Uh, Eric. <laughs> Shout out from Chile. <laughs> okay, and also... Uh, <laughs> Another old school Jeez. guy, Tom Christie from my neighborhood in the Sunset oh, District. Oh, Tom Christie. Oh, he wants to know, Tom, awesome. your memories of recording the Angel Witch demo. My memories of it? Yes. Oh, well, that's a good one. Uh, All right, Tom, good one, Tom. It was, it was fun. I mean, I think I learned the music like in four days or something. And I was, um, they just, I was like, Fuck yeah, Kevin Hayborn. Yeah, sure. A lot of people don't know, but Ke Kevin Hayborn came to the United States for a short period of time, was in our scene for like a year. For about a year, yep, yeah, he was. You're, then a then witch. You got You're an angel. Witch. You got mysteriously deported from yeah. the country. Yeah. You wonder how that happens. Under mysterious circumstances. <laughs> <laughs> Give me uh, one more. Okay, and, and Tom, uh, other people are going to mention. Uh, like seeing Sabbath at Day on the Green and this and that. Do you have any Day on the Green memories when you were a little kid? Oh my God, so many. How many? Huh? How many, Tom? Uh, how many do I have? Yeah, well, you know. Say, what, what do you remember? Let me just tell you one, one, one of my best friends, Rocky. We would get so, like, just blind drunk on, on kegs of beer and stuff before those things. So they started at 10 and we were hammered by 9 a.m. Absolutely. Yeah. My friend, yeah. my friend Rocky morning. missed Journey, like, we were like, fuck it, we're going to go watch the show. Rocky was like, we, we couldn't walk around with this dude, you know, Staggering. arms around our... It's like <laughs> yeah, weekend at Bernie's that day on the ground. Was that Journey J. Dallas that was in your No, 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 it was Journey... Yes. I don't remember, Molly Hatchet maybe? I don't remember, but 
Journey was That's a headliner. Right. The Hardy right. Speedwagon was yes. a different one. But Rock, Rocky didn't see any of the show. He sat, uh, oh, that's sat terrible. in a chair like this at the Coliseum all day long. He came back and got him. He was just beat red. I think Sunburnt. that's the funny thing about Dan on the Green is we take Bart over from San Francisco at like five or six in the morning, and you're drinking, doing all these things that you don't doing even have the strength to do anymore. Oh my right. God! So, you know, like and then I'm in the sun. <laughs> you go <laughs> through the whole phase of a hangover. Mahogany Rush, I'm like, I'm like drinking Insure or a Pedialyte. Yes. <laughs> Mahogany Rush, ACDC, uh, Aerosmith, Tom Petty, Dave Grohl, 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 uh, Aerosmith, Ted Nugent. I slept through Aerosmith in a seat, like right in the oh, yeah, yeah, that's I got terrible. so tired. <laughs> hey, and then I woke up for Ted when he came swinging in on the fucking thing. Oh, yeah, that I, was like, great. I blacked out in line of Ozzy Osbourne uh, Diary of Madman tour. At the Cal Palace? Rose. Okay. Yes, and I, I threw up on the guy in front of me. They played the Cal Palace? Uh, was that standing up in line. The Cal Palace or the Diary of Madman? No, Diary of Madman was, 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 was at the Cal Palace. Yeah, well, yeah, that was, was, it was the Cal Palace. I worked it. I was doing Bill Graham security at that time. All right, someone else mentions also the true, uh, the Trocadero. You remember that? I remember so, the you know, and Exodus. Not where you played. Played. Good place what places play. haven't you played at? That's the, that that's the Exodus is life. timeless. We've, we've never played in Hawaii. Okay. Really? Wow. I've been to yeah. Never. That's that's yeah, that's man, a fun place. They, they wanted us to do it. They they Hawaiian oh, promoters. Yeah. What's up? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> been, what forty years later and finally take you? So anyway. All right. So um, there, anyway. the last thing I'd like to say is that uh, we're gonna have a full Tom hunting episode. So we're just about to. Yeah. After this live episode, we're actually gonna go in and do what we normally do. We're gonna set the camera up. So. You'll be looking in the next few weeks. We will have uh, an episode uh, with Tom Hunting like we do with normal artists. We bring them in and we find out how they tick and we're doing that with you. I just want to come in live with you. I want to talk a little bit about the tour. I want to talk a little bit about the record. And I definitely wanted to talk about the battle that you had over the last year. And it's fucking completely kicked ass and conquered. And I think a lot of it has to do with the mentality and the mentality of everyone that watched, everyone that came in, chimed in, helped out. Uh, just showed your love. We saw it all. Tom saw it all. I mean, you know, it, it, it's outpouring. And so, in eight days, it starts San Luis Obispo. You haven't got your ticket oh, yeah. to Strikes Back Tour. We will see you starting in eight days. It's a full tour, loaded 35 shows. Find the closest one that's close to you and meet us there. You want to get a VIP package? They are available. Come to the sound check, say hello, put your arm around and say, Damn, I love when you guys play Toxic Waltz because I love to hear shit like that. Remember, remember, too, remember me? I was in the front. I room love room that. Black remember shirt? that I had oh, in yeah. 88? You totally. looked at me. God, I hear that all the time. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. It tells YouTube that we're doing something here. Leave me your questions and comments because Walter and I will do an episode all on about that. And if not, we will see you live in Central Stars and Vault very soon. See you on tour starting next week. Bye now. <laughs>